In this video, we'll be using a simple pendulum to calculate the value of the gravitational field strength, commonly known as G. It was the famous scientist Galileo Galilei who first noted back in 1583 the constancy of a pendulum's period by comparing the movement of a swinging lamp in a Pisa cathedral with his pulse rate. The image on the left is a model of a pendulum clock that was designed by Galileo just before his death, and the image on the right was a pendulum clock partially constructed by his son, Vincenzo, in 1649. However, for the purpose of today's investigation, we need to focus on the equation discovered by Dutch scientist Christian Huygens, which is the period of a pendulum is equal to 2 times pi times the square root of the fraction length of the pendulum divided by gravity. This investigation can be carried out by simply hanging a pendulum from a roof, from a retort stand, or by using a simulator. In this particular video, I'll be using the FET simulator. So let's calculate the gravitational field strength using a pendulum. Welcome to the FET Pendulum Lab. You see in front of you the nice apparatus that's set up to allow us to perform Galileo's pendulum experiment. First of all, let's add a stopwatch. We're setting our pendulum length to one meter, the mass of the pendulum to one kilogram, gravity is that of Earth, and we're going to make it no friction. So we can grab our pendulum and take it up to the maximum angle of 90 degrees and drop it. Now with the friction set to zero or no friction, we find this pendulum loses no energy. All the gravitational potential is converted to kinetic and vice versa. So this maintains a perfect oscillation. Let's now use a pendulum lab simulator to collect our first set of data whereby a pendulum has a length of one meter, it's inclined at 90 degrees, and we allow it to drop. We're gonna time it for 10 oscillations, starting there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'd repeat that for three trials so I could find an average for the string length or the pendulum length rather of one meter. I would then adjust the length to 80 centimeters. Take this up to the 90 degree inclination and repeat the calculation once again where I'd record 10 oscillations and do that for three more and do that for a total of three trials. I would do that for uh, then a pendulum length of 60 centimeters, 10 oscillations, three trials, a starting length of 40 centimeters, same starting point, and I would let that oscillate for 10 cycles and record three trials. And finally, a pendulum length of 20 centimeters at the same starting angle, and we allow that to oscillate and record 10 cycles for three trials, and that will complete our data set. You'll note in this experiment, the dependent variable is the time it takes for the oscillation, and the independent variable is the length of the string. Everything else is being controlled. That is the mass of the pendulum, the starting angle of the pendulum, the gravity of the earth, the friction of the system. Let's now examine this data using Excel. I've used the FET simulator to collect the following data. The table shown displays five pendulum lengths and three trials for each of the 10 cycles. What we need to do now is take the average time for the three trials of the 10 cycles. So if we look at the first example of pendulum length 20 centimeters, we have three trials for the 10 cycles. We total those, divide by three, and that gives us the average. So there's our data for each of the five different pendulum lengths. The next step is to calculate the pendulum period, remembering that the average value we've calculated is for 10 oscillations or 10 cycles. So quite simply, we have to take the value of each one of these trials, each average, and divide it by 10 to calculate the time for one individual oscillation or period. We do that and we get the following data. The final column in this table is to calculate the period squared, and the reason for this will become evident shortly. So we take our pendulum period 
for every particular length. In this case, I'm looking at the 20 centimeter length and the pendulum period was 0.898 and I square that value. And I do that for all of the five pendulum lengths. There's my full data set for the pendulum experiment. Let's now move on to the graphing. Step number one, we want to plot the data. So I've got my period squared in second squared on the vertical axes and I've got my length of pendulum in meters on the horizontal axes. Step number one is to plot the data. Step number two is to add a trend line. Of course, this has all been done in Excel. And step number three is to add a linear equation. So Excel generates the following linear equation, y equals 4.03 times x. The traditional linear equation is of the form y equals mx plus c, where y represents the dependent variable, m is the gradient, x is the independent variable, and c is the y-intercept. So let's use the general linear equation of y equals mx plus c and apply it to this specific scenario. So first of all, let's look at our dependent variable. We know the dependent variable is shown on the vertical axis and it is the period squared. So we substitute t squared, the period squared, in as the dependent variable. Next, we need to look at what is the gradient. Excel has calculated the gradient for us and it has a value of 4.03, which we now substitute in to our linear equation. The next step is to work out the x value, which is the independent variable. The independent variable is shown on the horizontal axis. So that's the length in meters. So we substitute L in as our independent variable. And finally, we want to substitute in the value for C, the y-intercept. In this particular graph, we can see that the line of best fit goes through the origin, so the y-intercept is zero. So we substitute in C equals zero to our general equation. We now have a linear equation using all the correct variables and terms for this particular data set. And that is t squared equals 4.03 times L. Or the period squared equals 4.03 times the length of the pendulum. Now the equation used to describe the relationship between a period and the length of a pendulum, as derived by Christian Huygens, is as follows. The period is equal to 2 times pi multiplied by the square root of the fraction, the length of the pendulum over gravity g. If we square both sides of this expression, we end up with t squared equals 4 pi squared times L over G. Let's now express this so the right-hand side of the equation removes L as a single factor. So we have t squared equals 4 pi squared over G times L. So here's our two equations. We have the linear equation that we've just calculated from our data, and we have Huygens' equation rearranged in a similar format where we have both using t squared as the dependent variable and both using L as the independent variable. Equation 1 and equation 2. Now observant viewers will see that the left-hand side of both equations are equal. So equation 1's left-hand side is t squared, and equation 2's left-hand side is t squared. And mathematically, if the left-hand side of both equations are equal, then the right-hand side of both equations must also be equal. So we can state that 4.03L is equal to 4 pi squared over g times L. The most obvious step now is to simplify this by dividing both sides by L. That leaves me with 4.03 is equal to 4 pi squared over g. Let's now transpose that to make g the subject. So I've simply multiplied g from the right-hand side to the left, and I've divided 4.03 from the left-hand side to the right. And I have now an expression, g equals 4 pi squared over 4.03. Everything on the right-hand side now is an actual quantifiable amount. It's not a variable, it's fixed. So we perform that calculation, and we end up with the value of g of 9.80 newtons per kilogram which is the correct value for gravitational field strength on the surface of planet Earth.